On the, this new episode of the IoT Show, we have Amina from a team at Microsoft that works on IoT devices. And we'll talk about the Microsoft Azure IoT device agent that the team has produced that will make device management for Windows straightforward, super easy at scale, and we'll have all the details today. Hi everyone, this is the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today we have Amina on the show. Amina, thanks for coming and joining us. Thanks, Olivier, for having me. Of course. So, Amina, before we jump into the topic of this Azure IoT device agent for Windows, can you tell our audience a bit more about yourself? Who are you, what team are you working with, and what are you doing? Absolutely. I'm a program manager and a team at Microsoft that focuses on IoT devices. Primarily, I focus on device management of internet of IoT solutions. Great. So today you're here to not introduce, but talk to us a bit more about what's happening on the uh, Azure IoT device agent for Windows side of things, right? Mm -hmm. So what is that thing that has a long name, but for a reason? What is absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. So Olivier, as you know, uh, whether it's an enterprise IoT solution where, where there are a lot of sensors on a factory floor for automation that are sending data to a uh, cloud solution, um, or if it's a consumer scenario where smart devices are making their ways in our homes. I love my digital lock that I can unlock from my phone. Um, the, both these IoT solutions have one thing in common. They both are remotely deployed okay. um, at a very large scale. Okay. So if something goes wrong or if someone has to monitor or configure these IoT devices, um, you have to have remote management capabilities. It becomes a must uh, have requirements before yep. any IoT solution deployment. Mm -hmm. um, so at Microsoft, we are providing this Microsoft Azure IoT device agent on yep. Windows that enables solution operators to configure, monitor, and manage these devices remotely. Okay, so basically you're giving customers something that they don't have to develop themselves, right? As Absolutely. a matter of fact, Microsoft has been doing these kind of things forever on laptops, mm -hmm. for enterprises, and so on. So um, I guess the question is, is I want to double click a little bit mm -hmm. into the why really are we doing that? Because mm -hmm. uh, we want to simplify developers' life. Uh, what is it that uh, this not product was the service that comes with that Asian mm -hmm. actually really offers. Absolutely, that's a great question. So, as part of Microsoft Azure IoT Agent for Windows, what we provide is an agent that provides three main capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, the very first thing is a tool uh, that allows local pro processes to use TPM for storing and retrieving Azure connection strings. Okay. Um, the second big component of our Azure IoT device agent is uh, to connect to the right Azure IoT Hub right out of the box okay. uh, using our Azure IoT Device Provisioning Service. Okay. The third main component of Azure IoT Device Agent is our Azure IoT Hub Device Management Client, DM Client for short, which provides basic device management capabilities right out of the box, such as reboot, Windows OS configuration, mm -hmm. certificate management, etc. Awesome. So. You have the hardware mm -hmm. root of trust, like that you manage. Mm -hmm. You have the authentication with Azure IoT Hub as a mm -hmm. service in the back through DPS. Right? That's correct. And then you have the device management. Mm -hmm. All of these functionalities are delivered by the services uh, by I IoT Hub and DPS in the back end. Mm -hmm. And so, um, if I sum up correctly, the device agent is actually implementing the functionalities down there. How does the agent relate to the SDKs? If someone is using or has an expertise in connecting mm -hmm. IoT devices to IoT Hub, how does that translate into the device agent world? That's a great question. Azure IoT device agent is built on top of Azure IoT mm -hmm. SDK. What we provide is the infrastructure and as well as um, a very extensive logging infrastructure where if something goes wrong with your client, you mm -hmm. have these logs that can help you debug uh, why certain configuration or certain command failed. So for an OEM, instead of them building the entire client mm -hmm. uh, by themselves, we provide them this extensible infrastructure okay. that they can use, which comes out with certain basic capabilities built in and um, 
it has provision of uh, building their custom plugins as well. So we do call it plugin infrastructure for our device agent. Nice. And back to the IoT Hub functionalities mm -hmm. themselves, because you're relying on the SDKs, any new feature that comes up will be enabled by an update, I guess, of the agent? Absolutely. So that's a great question. Our Azure IoT device agent is an open source project posted on GitHub. Okay. Um, so any OEM can take that, build an image, and include in the operating system. Um, anytime there is a new feature added, mm -hmm. we also rev up our uh, agent to make sure we keep up with the SDK. Um, and as well as uh, we provide the out-of-the-box capabilities mm -hmm. as individual DLLs. So even though we provide nine or 10 out-of-the-box device management capabilities, they don't have to use everything. Okay. They have to use only things they care about. Okay. That, that makes the image on the device leaner, more adapted, Absolutely. less attack surface in terms of security. Awesome. Right. Do you want to show us how that works? Absolutely. Let's do that. So in the interest of time, um, I have a device sitting in my office, okay. and I have already uh, provisioned, to, uh, uh, provisioned that device using DPS, and it's connected to my IoT Hub. So and Sorry for the interruption. Yeah. What OS is the device running right now? Oh, that's a good question. So the device in my office is running Windows 10 IoT Core. Okay. Our Azure IoT device agent can run on both IoT Core and on IoT Enterprise. Awesome. Thanks. And one of the uh, great features that we have added for development purposes, mm -hmm. if you just want to try it out on one device and see how everything works end to end, you can use Windows Device Portal. So okay. you can see right here, I'm connected to my device using Windows Device Portal, and we have added in uh, our October release this okay. new tab called Azure Clients. Okay. What it does is it gives me a single place where I can go and specify scope ID for my DPS mm -hmm. and configure my this device. Okay. Now it's connected to DPS, and here, I, with one click, I'm able to install device management client on my device. And as you can see, it's already running. That's a dream. And I can one click, install latest start version. Start and stop. Okay. Exactly. Uh, now I'll show you quickly, uh, my device is connected to my IoT hub. Yeah. Um, I did not give a very friendly name to my device. Well, the, the, the <laughs> auto provisioning through DPS actually gives yeah. you that GUID name, which actually is pretty useful for security as well, right? Absolutely. Not super great when you're reading the, uh, the names down there, but. Um, there's another thing I want to call out. So here is the uh, location of my device. Okay. And you can see, uh, this is my folder for DM client. Okay. If I click on that, there is a folder called manifest. Okay. So what this does is it uh, it gives me a choice of which plugins or which management capabilities I want to be loaded as part of this device agent. Okay. So what I have done is I have put all the DLLs that mm -hmm. come with the agent because I want it all. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then by putting it here when the agent loads, it will have all of these capabilities right out of the box. Okay. Now I'm going to use Device Explorer just to give you the uh, the device twin view of the okay. device using this device agent. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, that since all I have linked all of my plugins, mm -hmm. metadata for all of those plugins are showing up in my reported properties. Okay. What I did. Um, as part of this demo is I was playing with time management plugin, mm -hmm. which I realized actually time management is a very critical aspect of an IoT solution. It is. Because you want to sync all your devices to an NTP server yep. to make sure that if you're triggering an action mm -hmm. based on time, it all happened at the yeah. right time. I would add, actually, this beyond that is also the notion of having certs and keys that actually expire absolutely. for security reasons, right? So yeah, absolutely. So it's very important. Yep. Um, so right before uh, uh, this uh, uh, recording, I was just playing with Time Info plugin. Okay. And as you can see, I created a deployment ID mm -hmm. so I can keep track of my versioning. And then what this plugin gives me is 
some basic uh, properties that will be applied to this device as part of this plugin. So what I did, I set up my offset to mountain daylight time, but we are in Pacific time zone, okay. so let me adjust that. Um, so I'm just going to go update this to Pacific. I'm going to change my version to V3. Uh, for time zone, offset is 480. We okay. are six, seven hours uh, uh, offset by UTC. Yep. Uh, let me go change that to Pacific. And here also, Pacific. So I'm ready to send this property okay. to my device. Let's do it. And you can see it here under reported properties if I scroll down. Uh, here, you can see the deployment status is succeeded. Succeeded, V3. I see my V3, the timestamp when the update was applied, and you can see that my time zone has been updated to Pacific. Pretty time. straightforward. And because it's leveraging device twin, you can do that at scale. Absolutely. Right? You're really doing device management at scale. Nothing to touch on a device. Absolutely. Love it. Thanks, Amina. So I guess we're mm -hmm. going to add some links here in the description of the video for people to learn more about mm -hmm. the device agent. Absolutely. Yeah, and as I mentioned, everything is uh, open source and it, it is posted on our MSIoT GitHub. Um, link will be displayed yep. uh, on the screen. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Amina. Once again, thanks for watching the IoT Show. Don't forget to subscribe for the show and see you soon, guys.